In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear Reverend Fathers, dear faithful, the life of God is greater than the death of man. You know that God came down on this earth, and men put God to death. But God cannot die. You know, this is one of the, the things that the Cristeros, those Mexicans who were, who were fighting against the communists in Mexico, these communists who were trying to eradicate Catholicism in Mexico, and were executing Catholics. When they would execute the Catholics, one of them at one time said to them, you can kill me and I will go away. But God never dies. God will still be there. Dios nunca muere. Our Lord's death is kind of like an eclipse. You know that the sun is, is like the, the single source of, of heat for our earth. The sun's not there. You don't get heat. The, the earth becomes a cold rock. And when an eclipse haps and happens, as, as an eclipse will, eclipse will happen a week from tomorrow, the sun is covered. And the birds stop chirping. And the rabbits scurry into their holes. And it's like nature's dying. Everything's quiet. It's almost, the appearance is that, that this one source of heat and life for the earth has been snuffed out. It's only for two minutes, and then soon the light reappears, and everything goes on just like normal. You know that God desired when, when our Lord died that such manifestations happen that the sun be darkened, the rocks were rent, the earth trembled. It was almost as if, with the death of our Lord, nature as well was dying. But God cannot die. Our Lord died in his human nature. His, his human soul was separated from his human body. But his divinity lived on. His divinity is what has existed forever. It existed before we existed. It exists right now. It will always exist. God's divinity is the source of all existence, the source of all life. It's the basis, the very basis of all life, of anything that is. And so, the death of our Lord was, as it were, apparent because after his body was separated from his soul, his divinity lived on. The life of God is greater than the death of men, and the death of God is the life of men because By the death of our Lord, we all will live again. Everybody will live again. Everybody who has existed in the entire history of the world, everyone who's existing right now and who will die, us, everyone who will come to be after we are gone and will die, all of them, every single person will live again will come back from the dead by the life of God. God brought you into this world through the instrumentality of your parents. He will bring you back from the dead by himself. It'll be like a second creation of you. Our Lord, on this night, 
proves this to us. We are meant to believe by an indirect witness. It's rare that that you have a saint arise, God, God. Sometimes he wants to confirm this belief, our belief, that God has the power, God will raise everyone from the dead. He'll, he'll bring a saint along, and he'll give to this saint the power to raise people from the dead. And people will witness that miracle. St. Martin of Tours or St. Vincent Ferrer, for instance. But that's not for most people. Most people... You simply believe the witnesses who saw our Lord risen from the dead, who saw his glorified body. And this is what we believe, that he is God, that he lives forever, that he's the source of all life, and that he's going to raise every single one of us from the dead after we die. If you go to the cemetery and you talk to the dead, they don't hear you. You issue your voice, but your voice is not powerful enough for them to hear you. It's not strong enough. But our Lord has a voice that is strong enough to summon the dead. The dead do hear our Lord. You know this incredible miracle in John chapter 11 where he goes to the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus has been dead for four days. He stinks. He's decaying. His body is corrupting. His body is going away. Our Lord issues a command to Lazarus. He speaks to Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. And he obeys. Somehow, Lazarus hears the voice of our Lord. And that shows us his power, his divine power as a source of all life. We know it doesn't matter if you're dead for four days or four years or four centuries. It doesn't matter. All the dead can hear the voice of our Lord. All the dead will obey the voice of our Lord when he wants to summon, when he wants to call. Think about if you went to Mount, the Mount Olivet Cemetery, the beautiful Catholic cemetery here in, in Denver. You know, there's that Gothic mausoleum that was put there by a, a man named Werner Reed. He was an oil magnate. He died in 1919, and he, he had this marble shipped from Italy. You have this phenomenal reconstruction of, of like a mini Gothic church um, for the burial place for him, him and his family. And if you said, Werner, come forth, absolutely nothing would happen. Uh, He would not hear your voice. He would not hear your voice. But if our Lord was there, and our Lord said those words, we would see Werner. He would come out. We would get to meet him, even though he died 105 years ago. Just think if there was someone on this earth who had such a power. He said, oh, you've lost a family member. You'd like to see them again? I can raise them from the dead if you'd like. I can bring them back from the dead. What would you do? What would you do? What would you give? For someone who had such a power? How much money would you pay to such a person to get that loved one back? Well, it's going to happen. They're all going to come back. Everybody's going to come back. This life is just temporary. There's another life that God is going to give us the life that will last forever. Our Lord is going to call all of us. All of our souls are going to be reunited with our bodies. Everybody who's in the cemetery here at St. Isidore's, they're all going to come back. We believe this as Catholics 
And because we believe it, we make plans. We make plans for this happening. We say, I'm going to die. That's obvious. And then one day, I'm going to come back from the dead. I better get ready for this. I better make plans such that things are going to work out well for me coming back from the dead. So I can live that real life, that second life that we believe in. We want to see our Lord who has risen from the dead. We want to see our loved ones again who, who have died, who have passed away. You know how it is when, when a soldier leaves for the war. His wife says, will I see you again? She doesn't know. When someone dies, she can say, well, I see them again. I see my mother. I see my father. And the answer is, yes. You will see them again. Because our Lord is going to raise them from the dead. What will it be like? Well, it depends. It depends on how we live our life. There's two different ways of coming back from the dead. There's a way for those who die living the life of God. Those who die with the life of God in them apparently die, but cannot die because God cannot die. They have God inside of them, and with God inside of them, they can never die. They will live forever. Whereas those who die without the life of God, their body dies, but their soul is already dead. Christ will summon them, but they will come back from the dead only to die forever. We want to see our family members again. We want to be with our family members again. We will be with them if we live the life of God in this life. We will live forever with them if we die in the state of grace possessing that life of God, which cannot die. This life is only a test to see how we live. The death that we die is only a temporary death. It's merely the time for the way that we live life to be judged. So this is the main question for us on this Easter night. As we anticipate our own resurrection do we live as God lives, or do we live a dying life? Are we careful to make sure that the life of God remains in our soul? If we have the misfortune to lose it, to quickly restore it by the sacrament of confession. If we keep this life, we will one day live that life forever with all who live the life of God on this earth, all of our family members who died in the state of grace, everybody who started, died in the state of grace, we will live forever with them. You know, Frederick Nietzsche famously wrote in 1883, God is dead. And then God said in 1900, Nietzsche is dead because man dies, but God does not die. Dios nunca muere. We live the life of God in this life. We also will never die. We will live forever after our death in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.